morning, beloved. We continue our first readings from uh, St. Paul's letter to the, his first letter to the Corinthian church. We see him beginning to, to speak to them about um, the gospel of the cross of Jesus Christ. He says, you know, it's interesting, he, he focuses, remember, he is a, an apostle, so basically like a modern day bishop, so he is basically has all the authority to, to do everything. But the first thing he tells them is, uh, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. You, know, it's, it's, you think, well, of course he sent you to baptize. That's one of the main sacraments, you know? But Paul's like, no, 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 my focus is preaching. Anybody can baptize. Anybody can say the baptismal formula. You don't need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to baptize. Even a pagan can baptize in case of emergency. He goes, but God sent me specifically to preach. That's his, he recognizes that's his specific anointing on his, uh, and calling for his purpose here, to preach what he calls the gospel of, the, of Christ or the gospel of the cross of Christ. And he says, the message of, this, of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, or in other words, to those who are only living their life for this life. <laughs> They're living here just for today. This is all they have. They have nothing after life. Uh, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So notice that, that tense there, being saved. We're not completely saved yet. Salvation and sanctification is a process. We are being saved as long as we continue following Jesus. You know? Then, as we said a few days ago, the Holy Spirit is the one who is sanctifying us as we continue to walk with Jesus. You know, if, if it, once saved, always saved, or if we were already saved, and that you were guaranteed to die and go to heaven, well, uh, then again, this is kind of foolishness. Why would I live this lifestyle of the cross of Christ, this lifestyle of self-denial, if I'm guaranteed heaven already? You know, so those who think and some people just think, oh, well, when you die, you just go to heaven no matter what. You know, that's out there too. Well, if that was true, well, then there's no point in the lifestyle that Jesus lived and the lifestyle that he taught us. Remember, the first, one of the main things he said in, in lessons in discipleship, if you want to be my disciple, then you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and then come follow me. Follow me as you are denying yourself. Following me as you're carrying your cross after me. So, it, so this Christian lifestyle is a lifestyle of self-denial. That's why it's, um, it sounds so foolish. You know, because we're denying ourselves now and denying, you know, for eternal life later. For li something, for basically something we're hoping in later that there's no 100% proof of. You know, this is why it's so foolish to the, to the wise Greeks, you know. Because there's no proof. You can't scientifically prove that heaven is there. Nobody went there, hang out for a couple years, and came back and told us, right? We got near-death experiences and things like that, but that kind of get you close. But there's always a leap of faith that you have to take. You're sac sacrificing and suffering now for something that's really unknown, that you're hoping in somebody, somebody else's promise. But this, is, so, but this is what Paul says, it's foolishness to those who are perishing, who are just living their life for today. But for us who are being saved, who are on our way to heaven with Jesus, it is the power of God. So how, what is this self-denial that is the power of God? Well, you know, it's the old Catholic terminology, right? Offer it up, huh? Offer it up. It's basically redemptive suffering. So Jesus, his suffering and death redeemed us, bought us back from slavery to sin, so now we can choose to live life freely for God. So that redemptive suffering, suffering for the sake of someone else's salvation and sanctification, that's the power of God. Why? Because in some sense it doesn't matter what happens to you, in fact, in fact it's actually, it could be better for evil to be happening to you because then that becomes your greatest weapon against evil. You know, when some are mistreating you, when you have disappointments in life, when people are, are offending you and coming against you or attacking you or persecuting you, you can offer all that up for their salvation and for their sanctification. You turn it around right on them. 
So that tool, that their persecution, where they're trying to break you down, and uh, becomes actually your greatest weapon against them. You know? So it doesn't really matter what happens or what the government says or what laws they put out or even, you know, really, what we fight for it, but even what, what freedom we have or appear to have. We don't have as much freedom as we think right there. You know? You don't like the mask? You can offer it up for the salvation and sanctification of the government control leader people who are put it on you. We can offer it up to end all of this. You know, when somebody sins against you, you can offer it up for their salvation to, to convert their heart so that the sin dies right there. So anything that is used against us, you know, mask gets taken away, you don't like what the bishop is doing, you don't like what your priest is doing, you have, this is the power of God in your hands. Okay, this is not, you know, we, we lose it. We drop the power of God in our hands when we begin just complaining and moaning and groaning and whining about what's happening. That gets you nowhere. Gets me nowhere. But when we take what is given to us, whether we like it or not, and offer it up to God, now that becomes the power of God for salvation. You know, so as Catholics, we have to realize the power of God we have in our hands. This is our greatest weapon offering up redemptive suffering. This is what, isn't this what makes the saints so great? Why we honor them and glorify them and we think they're, they're so amazing? Because they, in fact, learn how to use this power of God, this redemptive suffering, and offering things up, and it sanctified them and, and matured their love, but also sanctified the world around them as well. And if we all do this and work together, this virus, this thing, whatever, whatever government leaders control it might be behind us, this is not going to last very long if we're all using the power of God to end it. You know, if we're all offering it up for the sake of salvation and sanctification. But if we all just turn in and grumble and whine and moan and, and get, let it distract us, well then it'll go on forever. Because then it, it has power over us. But if we take this power of God that he gives us, we can end whatever evil or suffering comes against us quickly. And in fact, use it to, it becomes a saint maker. It will sanctify us and help us actually on the way to heaven faster than if, if it was all roses. Huh? Heavenly Father, we just turn to you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit in our life in a special way to open our eyes to see and recognize all the things that you're giving us that you want us to offer up. If you want us to give back to you for redemptive, uh, redemptive suffering, Lord, help us to see how all of our suffering, all of our pain, all of our disappointments in life are actually the power of God in our hands for the salvation and sanctification of souls. And help us, Lord, to see that, to recognize that, and to rejoice in that, Lord, knowing that you can, that nothing is wasted with you, but you turn everything around for, for the good of those who love you. We pray all these things together. In Jesus' name, amen.